Okay class, we've just finished our first exam covering chapters 1 through 3. Now we're into chapter 4 and our next exam is going to be after we finish chapters 4, 5, and 6. Every three chapters we have an exam and it's a fresh start but remember now you still got to have your knowledge about debits and credits every chapter now we're going to be introduced to new accounts and you have to know whether they're increased by one or the other you still have to journalize transactions with these new accounts so here's what we've been doing in past chapters we've been looking at a service type business where you're selling your labor here accountants selling their accounting services lawyers selling their legal services, plumbers selling their plumbing services, they're selling their employees labor or their own labor and we've been collecting or earning fees and incurring expenses and hopefully have more revenue than expenses so the difference is equal to our net income our bottom line. Now we're gonna get into a little bit more complex type of business called a merchandiser where you're selling goods to a consumer our revenue is called sales or net sales and the biggest expense we're gonna have for a merchandising company is called the cost of goods sold you don't see the word expense but this is an expense account you're gonna be selling merchandise to your customers and here's what you're gonna collect from your customers and that same merchandise had cost our business this amount of dollars the difference between the two is the profit we're making on the sale here equal to a term called gross profit now this is not the same thing as the net income of our business because we still have to subtract out all the other expenses we've been dealing with in past chapters a merchandising company has the same type pretty much the same type of expenses as a service type business we've seen in past chapters but now the merchandiser has this big cost big expense called cost of goods sold. A lot of students get these two items mixed up here. They're really the same thing. The same merchandise being sold to customers. But here's the dollar amount you're collecting from the customers, your sales, your revenue. And the same merchandise, here's what you paid for it, your cost. Again, the difference between these two is called the gross profit. And here's a condensed income statement, just uh, four or five um, amounts here. We have the revenue on the top, minusing out our main expense called cost of goods sold to get a figure called gross profit. Then here all squished together is just one amount for all the other expenses of our business to get the bottom line, our net income. Again, we're focusing on here in Chapter 4 and Chapter 5, a merchandising company where you're buying merchandise from another business and selling it here in this case to the ultimate consumer or customers who are going to use up that merchandise or here's another merchandising company buying it from the manufacturer and reselling it to another business in turn who's going to sell it to the ultimate customer okay so this type of wholesaling versus retailing both are merchandising companies in the case of small wholesalers sometimes you hear the term jobber yes yeah, small distributors and because of um, I guess delivery systems being improved and the internet you know this customer way down here could actually order or maybe online directly from the manufacturer bypassing the markup or the higher prices of the wholesaler and retailer and of course maybe there's some shipping costs here so this is kind of fuzzy here in terms of the flow but right now here in our account in our chapter 4 we're learning the accounting for these guys here an important part of uh, any business is to be able to collect the money from your customers so in case of a cash sale we've seen cash sales before in the previous chapters where we had billed the customer and got the money right away but here in the case of a merchandising company you first have to buy the merchandise and it's going to sit on the shelf for a while before you can sell it and collect the money from your customers now you can use that money to pay off your bills and the main one is to buy more merchandise so the time it takes to go around this so-called cycle is called one operating cycle 
In the case of cash sales, you get your money right away. So the main thing you're waiting for is to move this inventory out of your store, off the shelves. And it'll sit here for a while, right? You're going to have to make sure you have enough adequate um, variety to be able to satisfy your customers. Otherwise, they'll go to somebody else. Now, if you sell on account or on credit, you still have merchandise sitting on the shelf that you have to buy and replenish. But now when you sell, you don't collect the money right away. We've learned in the past chapters to sell on account or sell on credit where you're going to bill your customers and now have a receivable and now you're waiting and waiting to collect this money and only when you do collect you can you can pay off your bills again one of them being the merchandise you're buying maybe on account also so you don't have to pay for it right away so again the time the money flows around this cycle is called one operating cycle and a lot of businesses when they first start up, don't realize they have to wait and wait and wait before they collect the money again. You have to have enough money already flowing in this cycle to be able to uh, even get started in your business. You have to have enough investment in here. Sometimes we call that working capital. And if you don't have sufficient working capital, this thing doesn't turn and you're going to get stuck and you're going to be not able to sell inventory or buy more inventory to sell to your customers. Okay, so very critical here in terms of making sure this thing is flowing. We're focusing on a new account to hold this merchandise we're buying called merchandise inventory. So here is a, a box representing that. Let me illustrate it a different way. Let's see, how about a black background? So here's my store sitting in my store at the beginning of the month of the year is my beginning inventory that I didn't sell from last year or last month the ending of last month and then during this month or this year whatever time period I'm working with I'm going to buy more inventory to replenish the empty shelves here or the warehouse I'm working with the term we use when we buy is called purchases Okay, we purchase inventory, let's say from a, from a, my pen is not working here, from a supplier. Okay, from a supplier. And then we're going to be selling this merchandise to our customer. Okay, I can't draw everything on my limited screen here. What we take out of our store is the sales. Here's what we're charging our customers. But keep in mind what's going in here is not the sales price being sent to the customers or going to collect from the customers. What's in here is our original costs, be it the new things we're buying or the old things we're buying is really the, our original old costs. So what's coming out here, what we got to take out of this account or this store building is our costs called cost of goods sold. So these two amounts, the sales revenue and the cost of goods sold expense account are really dealing with the same thing, this item coming out of our store. So again, when you subtract the cost, what we bought versus what we're going to collect from our customers, the difference is a profit or called gross profit. Now what you're deducting here is not what you bought during the month of the year. Here's what you bought during the month of the year. What you get to deduct is the cost of what you take out of your store that goes to the customer. And here's what the customers are going to pay you. And here's what you paid uh, for that same merchandise, equaling the profit for your company. From which again, now you can pay off your other bills called the operating expenses to get that bottom line of net income. Okay, so now you didn't sell out everything, right, of your store because if you look in your store at the end of the month or year, sitting on the shelf is stuff you didn't sell. We call that the ending inventory. So the maximum you can sell coming out of your store is what you start off with plus what you buy. We call this right here, this total of these two, the merchandise available for sale. The maximum you can sell is what you start off with plus what you buy. And there's only two things you do with this. Either you sell it, cost of goods sold going out, or you don't. In other words, these two here have to equal these two here. Both pairs are equal to something called cost of merchandise available for sale. 
or let's say cost of goods sometimes they use available for sale okay that's the total of this two and this two the total of this two uh, let's try that again pin the total of this two what you start off with plus what you buy has to equal the total of this two what you sold and didn't sell right here this total of the pairs are called merchandise available for sale we'll see this calculation more when we go into the next chapter chapter 5 so let's talk about a transaction that has to be journalized remember debits and credits so the transaction is on June 20th our company Jason sells or purchased not selling but buying now fourteen thousand dollars of merchandise inventory and we're gonna pay cash right away now it's very unlikely for a medium or large size company to pay cash right away usually we buy an account but let's go ahead and record this we're buying an asset called merchandise inventory and we know assets are increasing the rule is with debits and here's another asset cash when you see the word pay you know automatically cash credit reducing that asset Here's the source document for buying and selling merchandise called an invoice. To the seller who writes up this invoice, Main Source Inc., this is a sales invoice. And to the buyer, which we're working with right now, it Barbie Inc., it's a purchase invoice. Here this uh, merchandise of backup systems was sold on May 4th and before this uh, invoice was uh, created, before the sale was made, Barbie must have placed an order with main source here with a document that's referenced to called a purchase order. Barbie wrote up a order form, uh, their order form number 167, and sent it to main source. And the main source had shipped the merchandise to Barbie. Barbie makes sure they received that merchandise that they had ordered comparing it to the purchase order comparing it to um, this invoice here and here you can see <coughs> excuse me they reordered 500 of these backup systems each one cost $54 so when you multiply out we call this extension extending the total of this bill is 27000 you could tack on some shipping charges which we'll talk about in a minute and taxes to get a total this is what we're working with in this chapter just the total although you do want to keep track of the unit price here um, every time you sell one of these backup systems you know it costs you $54 um, and you of course you buy other types of products besides this backup system so there's a lot of detailed tracking we do in real life especially called a subsidiary ledger which we don't see any of that here in chapter 4 okay so let's uh, take a look at uh, how some of this is recorded now this is the source document the invoice oh before we uh, take a look at how it's recorded you see this item here called terms so when do you have to pay off this 27,000 when is it due you don't pay it off as soon as you get the bill you want to hang on to your money as long as possible so this is telling you it's going to be due in 30 days net n30 net 30 but if you pay off your bill earlier 10 days earlier 10 days from this date here not the date you receive the merchandise uh, main source is going to give Barbie a 2% discount so the way to read this is called 210 net 30 so here's the date the item was sold and here's the 30 here's the 30 day period here okay and if you pay off your bill early 10 days I guess versus a total of 30 days if you pay off your bill 10 days early they're going to give you a 2% discount versus having to pay off uh, the 100% over here again it's called 210 net 30 two percent purchase discount if you're the buyer or two percent sales discount if you're the seller versus having to collect the whole bill in 30 days or pay off the whole bill in 30 days so the difference here is a 20-day 
prepayment to get this uh, two percent discount so again a transaction to buy merchandise Jason bought twenty seven thousand dollars of inventory this time on credit or on account and you don't have terms like this if it's a cash sale right it's a credit sale two ten and thirty so you don't know whether the ta the the buyer is going to take advantage of this discount until the actual payment is made but you recall the purchase when you buy it when you receive the merchandise so here on May 7th we're going to debit merchandise inventory for the full cost of 27,000 and not credit cash but here our uh, common liability account called accounts payable increasing with a credit 27,000 then let's say we pay off our bill within that 10-day period okay we're paying it off so the journal entry is to record the zeroing out let me go back a step here we're gonna zero out this liability for the full amount even though we don't pay off the full 27 because we get a discount so increase liability with credit so when we pay off we're gonna decrease the liability with a debit notice the full amount here now the amount of cash you're spending, credit cash, is not 27000 but you got to reduce it by the discount, which comes out to 2% of the uh, sales price, purchase price, or $54. So you're reducing the 27000 by 54 credit cash. Now notice, if you just recorded this, you're not going to balance your total debit dollars or credit dollars. So here is the discount, the 540 and what happens when you credit merchandise inventory? Is it increasing this account or decreasing? Again, you first analyze what type of account this is. Inventory is something we own. We just bought it, right, in the previous entry. But here, we're going to reduce the cost of the inventory by the amount of the discount we earned by paying off early. Crediting the asset, reducing the cost. So here's the, and we post, of course, to the general ledger from the journal we just saw. Here's the posting of the original purchase, and here's the posting of the discount, reducing this account asset, remember, debit increase, credit decrease. So the net cost of that purchase is the difference here, debit balance. When you look at the other side of your accounting equation, remember, assets on one side and liabilities on the other and equity, accounts payable, increase first when you bought it on account and decrease when you pay it off not by the amount of cash you paid maybe you had another T over here for cash right cash credit it's not the same amount here but we zero out the liability because we don't owe anything anymore to this uh, supplier so what's the value of taking advantage of the discount well, you earned 2%, right, to pay off your bill early. 2% sounds real small, but you earned that 2% over a 20-day period. And if you annualize this 2%, it comes out to 36.5% a year. Now, where can you invest money to earn this amount? Well, right here, by paying off your bill early, if they offered you this discount here. Now, if he didn't offer you, you would have to pay off again your whole bill without any discount within 30 days of the purchase date. So make sure you take advantage of this discount. In fact, if you don't have the money to pay off early, you should borrow it because the cost of borrowing is probably less than this annual interest rate. Yeah, your borrowing annual interest rate is less than the savings interest rate. Now, what, now tell me, why would the, the seller give you this type of discount here? Well, maybe they're desperate to collect their money early because they got to pay off their bills. You know, they want to ensure that they get their money early. Now, there's other types of discounts besides um, purchase discounts that you pay off your bill early here called trade discounts. Trade discounts are generally just a total amount you're given off the regular price which is kind of an artificial thing so if this is the regular price here and you're given a discount without even paying off your bill early here the net amount is the amount you record when you buy the item you don't need to record this discount reducing the sales price okay? you just record this net amount 
There's other things that reduce the cost of your uh, purchases. So let's say that you bought something and then you returned it. Well, the cost now is going to be reducing the amount you owe and reducing your inventory. Something similar to a purchase return is a purchase allowance. But in this case, you're not returning the item to the seller. But because you're kind of dissatisfied and the seller wants to keep you satisfied, they're going to reduce the price. They're going to reduce the cost. Okay? Here you return the item, so you reduce it by the full cost. Here you keep the item, but you're going to reduce it whatever allowance they give you, okay? reducing the merchandise inventory cost. Example, our company Matrix, this is the point of view we're taking, the buyer, bought 20,000 of merchandise inventory with terms of 210 net 30. So we saw, like before, we debit the merchandise inventory account and we credit the accounts payable for the full amount of the purchase. But then we discover $500 of that merchandise we just recorded was defective. Now we already recorded the 20,000 and we just later on discover that it's defective or maybe even something that we really didn't order or it's the wrong color or something's broken. Yeah? So we call up that seller and we ask for permission to return it and they give it to us because we're such good customers. So here's the journal entry to record when we return that merchandise. When we first bought it, we just did the opposite here. We had debited inventory and credited payable. So now you're reducing both of these accounts, reducing the liability debit, reducing the asset credit for the cost of that returned item. So now we're going to pay off our bill, and if you remember, there was a terms of 210 net 30, and we're paying it off early here on May 18, within that 10-day discount period. Now you're not going to take 10% of the full 20,000 because we returned 500 of that 20,000, leaving in a net amount of 19,500, and you're taking 2% of that, which comes out to $390. So what we really are paying is 98% of 9,500. Okay, remember these two here, 100% should equal this here. Yeah, 2%, 98%, 100%. So the amount of cash going out here, 98%. The, the inventory being reduced, not by the return, but by the discount we're taking, 2% and then reducing the payable for the 100% or the rest of the amount we owe. Remember, we already reduced the payable by this 500 when we had returned that uh, defective inventory. Okay, so another thing that may affect the cost of the merchandise we buy, here with the buyer, is this shipping cost to get it from the seller to the buyer. And here, FOB means free on board, not that other thing you're thinking of, yeah? Free on board. And there's two conditions for free on board, either shipping point or destination. Here is the shipping point. The seller is shipping it out, yeah? So once this uh, item is shipped out, free on board shipping point, it's the buyer's responsibility here to pay for the shipping. It's the buyer's responsibility if something goes wrong or the item gets damaged along the way to their own company that shipping point. Or the other way, other method of uh, charging costs is free on board destination. Here's the destination. So the buyer takes title to the product right here. So the seller is responsible for shipping the merchandise, paying this cost here. The seller is responsible for anything goes wrong here. So let's see if I can circle this. Shipping point. Free on board shipping point means that all of this here is a responsibility. Title transfers right here. Or free on board destination, the seller owns it all the way up to, to here, this, this point right here. And whoever is responsible here usually pays the shipping costs. Now, um, the, the seller may arrange for the shipping here, but may charge that cost with the invoice to the buyer. So let's say we have our company, Jason, they buy $8,000 worth of merchandise and they also have to pay, is this truck moving here, getting me kind of dizzy, $100 of transportation costs. So how do we record all of this? Well, it's merchandise inventory debit, 
not just for the $8,000 cost, but also the shipping, the transportation cost is added in. Everything to get that inventory ready and into our business, we have to add in that cost, maybe even insurance, yeah, special delivery costs. And then it looks like we paid cash. Could be accounts payable, credit, but here cash. Now, this is look like maybe it's one on one bill, both of these two charges, the 8100 But if you had to pay the shipping cost separately, then you would still debit merchandise inventory if you're the buyer. Now, if you're the seller and had to pay the cost, you would not debit merchandise inventory because that inventory is gone. You just sold it. You would probably be debiting some type of delivery expense if you're the seller and had to pay the shipping cost. But in the case of the buyer paying the cost, that cost goes into the inventory that they just bought. So question, here our seller, seller company sold 7,500 of merchandise to buyer company on account, on credit, terms of 210 net 30. And then the shipping, it will be shipping point. Now who's paying this $100 shipping cost? title changes hands right at the shipping point so now the buyer is responsible for the shipping right for the transportation this is the buyer's cost the buyer is paying this and this the seller is going to collect this amount here eventually uh, because on on credit later on yeah not now so question which of the following will be part of the buyer's journal entry here on the date of sale date of purchase so A, is it credit sales? Sales is our new revenue count for 7500 Well, that's the seller's journal entry, right? We're looking for the buyer's journal entry, so this is not right. B, credit purchase discount, 150 At the time you buy, you have not, you don't know whether you're going to take advantage of this discount. So when you pay, a discount may be recorded. And there is no purchase discount account, at least in the accounting method we're learning here in the major part of chapter 4. What we're learning is something called perpetual, perpetual method of inventory. We always continue tracking how much inventory we have perpetually. If you look in the back of our chapter 4, there's another method called periodic inventory. Now I want you to know that there's two methods but I'm not going to hold you responsible for knowing the detail of the periodic method which includes this account here. Okay, So we're not going to deal with this one here at least in uh, what we're learning the major part of chapter 4 perpetual inventory. Here merchandise inventory debit for these two here and because the seller no, excuse me, the buyer is paying this cost. We add it to, we include it to the asset we're buying, merchandise inventory. Asset debit increase. This looks like our answer here, yeah? Debit accounts payable. Now we're going to owe money, right? We're, we're buying it on account. But it's probably we owing this amount here. And when you owe money, increasing liability, you don't debit a liability. To increase the liability, you credit. And this would be the wrong amount here, right? So correct answer. Answer C. You know, at the time we buy the viewpoint of the buyer. So just summarizing all the costs of buying. Here's the raw cost of the inventory we're buying. And you gotta reduce it for any discounts we get by paying off our bill early if there are terms to give us a discount. We have to also reduce it by any merchandise we return back to the seller or any allowances they give us. They tell us to keep it, but we're going to reduce the price. Notice the, um, the reduction here, minus. So this is an asset. This would be a debit. And if you reduce it, you got to be crediting, right, this asset. And here, transportation costs, um, it will be shipping point, yeah? The buyer pays this cost. This must be a debit because you're adding it to this cost, right? Increasing the asset. So the total cost of purchases you made for the period, not what you sold now, but what you bought, is this figure right here. 
And if you look at the company's income statement here at the top, well, this is now switching point of views. In the previous slides, we were looking at buying merchandise. Now we're looking at us, the same company, selling this to our customers. So here's our new revenue account called sales. And if the customer pays off their bill early, then we, have, we give them a discount if they do so. Here's something called sales discount. Now we're not going to reduce sales directly like we had reduced our merchandise purchases. But here we always want to track how much discounts we're giving our customers. So we're going to set up a new account called sales discount. Also if customers, our customers return merchandise, we're going to call that sales returns. Or if we tell the customer who's dissatisfied to keep that merchandise but we're going to reduce their price, we call that an allowance. So both of these are going to be tracked, well these two are tracked in one account and discounts in another. Then we combine them with the sales we made. But because it's really reducing the sales, we subtract this subtotal. Remember this is on our income statement now to get something called net sales. And if you remember um, the cost coming out of our store at our cost, not the sales price, here's something called cost of goods sold. Again, not what we bought, but the cost of what we had sold. Here's the retail price of what we had sold to be collected from customers. And the same merchandise, these two are talking about the same merchandise. At our cost, cost of goods sold, and the difference is again called gross profit. Again, the viewpoint of selling now, here on March 18, our company, Diamond Store, sold 25,000 of merchandise on account, on credit, and the merchandise cost us 18,000. So whenever we have a sale, we're going to have to record two journal entries. One for the revenue, revenues recorded with credit, sales, here's the offsetting debit because we didn't get the money yet, debit accounts receivable. Okay, so here's one. And the second journal entry is to record the cost of that sale. It cost us 18,000, the same merchandise we sold to the customer. And we've got to reduce the asset because it's coming out of our inventory. Asset reduced with a credit. So on this one sale, here's the revenue we earn, and here's the cost we incurred. And the difference, I think, if I can do this in my head, is a profit of $7,000. Our profit is not the amount we had sold it for, because we had to pay for the same merchandise we sold, 18000 Okay, so profit right here on this one sale. And of course, eventually on the financial statement, we're going to show the profit for the whole month or the whole year. We have another sale here. Um, it, it, the sales price is 6000 sold in an account, but it cost us, when we had bought it, $3,500. So again, two journal entries to record the revenue and to record the costs here on account, so accounts receivable, and here reducing the inventory asset. The profit we made, revenue minus expense, gee this is hard for me, is it uh, 2500 profit? Right? Revenue minus expense. I think I should break out my calculator, I can do this in my head. I know what to debit and credit, but if you ask me to add it in my head, I gotta use my computer. And then Within the 10-day period, here's how much we collected from our customers. Looks like not the full receivable here of 6000 but because they paid off with 10 days, we got to give them a 2% discount. So I know I'm going to debit cash if I get this money. Debit cash. Cash. And the customer doesn't owe me the receivable anymore, so I got to zero out the whole receivable asset with a credit. So that leaves more credits than debits. So to equalize, here's that new account. Not sales, but a new account called sales discount. This is, sales is a revenue account. Sales discount is a contra revenue. It's almost like an expense, but we group it together with the sales. Yeah. Increase with a debit. Okay. So we'll see how this appears in a financial statement in a couple slides from now. Then we sold again. 
$7,500 on account and it cost us $4,000 with terms. Two journal entries now when you sell. Oh sorry, this is a... Uh, okay, yeah, the sale. Recording revenue, recording expense. Right? Revenue, expense. I think I can do this in my head. Profit of $3,500. But before we can collect the money, here it says that some merchandise of $800 was returned. And because we had recorded two journal entries when we sold, you now have to record two journal entries when you return. Here, reducing the sales we had recorded by $800. And this merchandise had cost us, which had, we had reduced inventory by $4,700. Uh, so whatever you debited before, you now got a credit. But if you credited before on the original sale, you got a debit. Remember there were two journal entries on the original sale? Well, here are two journal entries when you have a return to reverse the sale. But notice it's not just sales. Because it's a return, we have this new account called sales returns and also for allowances. A contra revenue increase with a debit. And here reducing the amount the customers owe, owe us in accounts receivable, credit asset. And these two are just the same two accounts we saw before now flip-flopping it, right? Increasing the inventory, putting it back in your store or the warehouse, and reducing the expense here. Then the customer pays you off for the rest of the bill, right? Within the 10 days. So you got to remember now, you don't figure out the discount on the gross amount, but the net amount after the return. So 2% of this is the discount and we have a new account called sales discount. You don't reduce the sales directly. You do it indirectly by increasing this contra revenue. So eventually you journalize all these new transactions and the old transactions and you post them to the ledger and you pull those balances now in every single one of your ledger accounts and you put it onto this uh, trial balance. After of course you make adjusting entries like we learned in chapter 3. And the new accounts we learned here in Chapter 4 is this new asset, Merchandise Inventory, that increases when you buy merchandise and decreases when you sell. Let's see, decrease if you return it to the supplier, or decrease if you get a discount from the supplier, or increase if you buy, uh, pay transportation costs, shipping costs, to get this merchandise to your store, to your business. Another account, I guess our new revenue account is called Sales. And then here's two contra revenues, discounts you give your customers for the period, for the month, for the year, and returns or allowances you give your customers. And here's the big expense for the, our merchandising company, the cost of goods sold. The cost originally starts here, right, in your inventory, and then eventually when you sell, you move it here in that second of the two journal entries for sales. And then the expenses are pretty much the same, making sure that total debits equal total credits. Then you prepare your financial statements with the adjusted trial balance. And we'll see the financial statements in a couple of slides from now. But in the meantime, let's take a look at more journal entries. Remember how we get ready for the next accounting period by closing out, let's see, revenue and then all these expenses including this big one and including this contra revenue now see so all of this here is closed out and dividends also closed out right so the first of the four closing entries is to close out sales the revenue originally recorded with credits now you debit and the offsetting credit goes into the temporary income summary account then you close out all these debits here by putting in by putting in credits, or journalizing credits. You add them all up and you debit that temporary income summary account. So here's the revenue you put in with the first journal entry and here's all these expenses put in with the second journal entry. So if you take the difference between the two, revenue expenses, if you were to name this amount right here, this would be the net income showing up on your income statement. So as a double check, this income summary got to have the net income as a balance before you close out this account. And you remember where we close out this income summary account? Into retained earnings. right? Take it out of income summary and put it into retained earnings. And of course the last thing you put into retained earnings or really to adjust to close out is the dividends. right? 
by reducing retained earnings. So here's an income statement. Notice now the new format. Our revenue is still at the top, but the contra revenue is right next, right? And this is not a, a credit debit column, it's just a grouping column. So these two, which are really debit balances, are subtotal. Now it makes it easier to add or subtract with the revenue. Now what would you do? Let me hide this here. What would you do? Add or subtract these two numbers? <laughs> well, this is a credit and this is a debit. Oh, when you combine debits and credits, you never add, you subtract to get a smaller, in this case, net sales amount. And then the biggest expense of our business, the cost of goods sold is subtracted out. In other words, here is all the revenue we've earned from selling to our customers, merchandise. And the same merchandise cost us this. Now this is not what you bought during the year. What you bought during the year could still be sitting in your store as inventory asset. Here's what you sold during, it, uh, during the year at your cost, at Barton's cost. And the same merchandise is being charged to our Barton's customers at this amount, net of the returns and allowances and discounts. To get again this figure called gross profit, very important figure. You'll see a calculation at the end of our chapter and of our slideshow regarding gross profit. Then you have all of the other expenses of the business that we're familiar with in past chapters here labeled operating expenses that are subtotaled into two main groups called selling, everything dealing with getting that products out your store, commissions, advertising, marketing, even the rent for your store, even the rent for storing it in your warehouse, everything related for um, that, that um, part of your business is right here. Then, all, then the rest of your business, here the executive salaries, the, really the business office operations, even your accounting department, my salary would be over here. Subtotaled in the two groups, then subtotaled again, subtracting from the gross profit to get that bottom line we already saw that was in the income summary account. Here's a very, very condensed income statement. This is the long formatted income statement. And here's a very condensed one, starting off with the net sales, already subtracting out the returns and allowances and discounts for sales. Here's the cost of goods sold combined with the other expenses in one figure. Total expenses equals net income. Balance sheet, here's the new account we've seen, inventory. I think all the other accounts are similar to what we've seen before. These here are current assets stuff that you can convert to cash real fast or relatively fast or use up fast and this is long-term assets here here's current liabilities that are have to be paid off soon current liabilities so we saw a ratio of these two here current assets divided by current liabilities back in chapter 3 called uh, current ratio and we'll see another ratio uh, right here Instead of dividing current assets by the current liabilities, we look at specific current assets called quick assets, which is cash or stuff that you can sell real fast, investments, and turn it into cash. Or well, here, you're waiting to collect the cash from your customers. We don't have inventory here because it'll take too long to collect it or convert it into cash. It's not a quick asset. And we divide it by the same current liabilities again to get another ratio, not current, uh, current ratio, but uh, asset test ratio. Sometimes they call it this even a quick ratio. And the amount up here and down here should be probably one to one. One dollar of quick assets for one dollar of current liabilities. That's why they say the one over here. One divided by one. So you have, you have enough cash or quick, quick assets to eventually pay off your liabilities. Now if this ratio goes below one, that probably means that you have to borrow money. Right? Not current liabilities payback, but long-term liabilities paying back to increase your cash to pay off your liabilities. The last ratio we want to look at here for Chapter 4 is called the gross, remember gross profit? Well, gross profit is our net sales minus the cost of goods sold. They just should have put gross profit up here. And then you divide it by the same net sales figure you have really partially up here. Yeah. So let's say that you sell something for one dollar, yeah, one dollar up here. But you bought that same merchandise for fifty cents. 
So tell me what's the margin here? Well, it comes out to a 50 cents difference up here divided by one dollar should be a 50 percent or 50 percent gross profit. This is telling you for every dollar you sell you're making a profit of 50 cents. Now did you increase your uh, cost by 50 cents? You bought it at 50 cents and you're selling it for a dollar. What you did was a hundred percent markup here, right? Not a 50 percent markup. Here's your cost and you double it and you sell it to your customers and here's the profit you're making. This is a very important figure, this gross profit margin. And it kind of stays the same no matter if your sales go up or down. Unless if you see a change drastically, that probably means you're probably selling a new line or a different line of products. If I mentioned to our class today, if I was an IRS auditor, I would go to your store shelf and take a look at the sales price of a few items. Okay, here's a sales price. Then I go into your records and check how much you bought that item for. I take the difference and I figure out the margin, the gross profit, the gross profit percentage. Now I look at your financial statement. I look at your financial statement. Let's go back one here. I look at your financial statement and I figure I take this number and I divide it by net sales. Is it close to that 50%? not it's less than that you're paying less taxes because you're showing less profit something's wrong because I looked at your inventory it says you should be having a 50 percent gross margin I'm guessing you deducted all of your costs of goods sold but you didn't report all your revenue maybe that cash sales you didn't ring up on the register somehow it didn't fall into those slots in your uh, cash register so it wasn't rung up here but you deducted your costs hmm I think I need to audit your business further. Okay, this is the end of our Chapter 4 video lecture. Uh, work on your Learn Smart, work on your homework problems. Email me if you have questions. Talk to you later.